you guys have been asking for us to test tri cams. We did try to do this in the Slack Snap Lab and didn't work so well. But we're here in real rock. Got some granite here. We'll show you how we're all set up. And we'll start with the cult level of pink tri cam, I think is uh, what everybody loves. So, and then we'll test this old one as well because the sling is older than these fresh out of the package camp tri cams with Dyneema slings. If you make enough requests, we'll actually test it. Uh, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to a break test video uh, where we're going to test these tri-cams and let me show you how they work real quick. You know, you don't really set them in like nuts, though I'm sure you, you could. You totally can. You totally can. You can use technically anything as nuts. Uh, but uh, if you have it like this, it actively, is it active at this point? Yeah. yeah, it's active, right? So it actively is trying to push against the rock and it supposedly is bomber. Uh, these were popular in Highline all-natural rigging, where we don't use bolts, because they put less force on the rocks. Uh, as we learned in some other brake test videos, rocks like to move. After brake testing almost 2,000 things now, I've learned to trust gear and not trust rocks. So, let me show you the pink tricam placement that uh, Bobby did, in case you don't like it. And then you can judge for yourself what kind of a placement that is, and we'll just start pulling with our 81 to 1. We'll show you that too. All right, so there is the tri-cam placement. So you can see how pink tri-cams are great for finger pods. But let me show you how we got this set up. So we actually put a small carabiner here, which will break ideally before the line scale two. And we have the line scale two tied to a temporary bolt up there. So when this comes out, I'm hoping it falls and hangs here and doesn't bash into things. And then we come down to this uh, BFP. It's a uh, big fat pulley. And it's going to redirect so we can actually pull it straight down in more of an orientation that you would get in a climbing situation. And then we head over to, well, double SMC pulleys uh, next to each other. So this creates basically a nine to one or a something to one. And then it goes all the way over to here into the Grigri so we can have friction. So it reduces what we can use this with. But yeah, we are going to uh, put some multipliers on there. We're going to pull, hopefully not fall, and get some readings. Bobby, what happened to the tri-cam? Well, you can see here, it looks like a chunk of it broke off. The nose broke off? Yeah. What? Wow. All right. But the sling's okay? Uh, the sling looks fine. What's it rated for? Nine in camming and seven in... Uh, oh. So it went above MBS. Uh, you got hurt pretty bad for the first brake test. <laughs> I think... Things are looking up. Bobby's going to replace it as a nut. And we're going to pull it again, but safer. Safer. People think this is fun and games. It's a serious shit. <laughs> What's that, Bobby? So I found the nose of the tricam. It was still in the crack. You can see the um, where it's sheared, um, which matches that. Wow. So uh, what force did we get? Uh, well, we had a little dyno malfunction, um, but we believe it's above 11. That's the last that we saw on the camera. All right, so we're gonna switch to our other line scale to see if it's not as sensitive. See but, if we can break that one too. <laughs> yeah, see. And, but I think it, it when it hits, it just kind of wants to shut off. So we're gonna try to maybe pad the next one. Maybe we can wrap it in tree pro. Yeah, that's right. But then you can't see the screen. Yeah. Ugh, pros and cons. Yeah. What do you think? I don't think, I think it's just shutting off because it, it was just sitting here and it shut It was off on a for a while. Times. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, Bad heat. timing. Yeah. Heat, it might be the heat. Okay, so we tried to pull again, line scale shut off again, but we're getting better at not falling. Nobody fell this time. So we're going to switch out this line scale, see how it does. I also have the 50 kN load cell. Interesting result here, Ryan. Oh, we have an interesting result. So we have some more damage there 
But here, um, the back of it um, sheared off and the pin is starting to come Whoa, out there. Oh, what's holding the pin in? Like nothing. Oh, it's hold, let me see it on the other side. Oh, wow. Any idea what uh, force we had last, the next time? At least five. At least five. Hmm. That's good, I think. All right, let's, let's try a different one. Okay, so it's been a minute. An yeah. hour. <laughs> it's been an hour. Got new line scale uh, in the system. A better redirect bolt. We used, what, a 5 8 and it was coming out. So it was... We used a quarter inch. Oh, it was a quarter inch, okay. We upgraded to a 3 8 Yeah, so like, uh, it's putting a lot of force on the redirect. And, you know, water. So uh, <laughs> let's try to pull on the red tri-cam and I'll show you the placement right now. Here's the red one. It's got a nice seat in the back. And then the, the nose is, well, doing nose things. And we're getting close to our redirect, but still high enough. So we'll turn this on in a minute. Hopefully this catches it. Our poor attempt of patting it. <laughs> and Mike, still going strong after scary fall. All right, so we have a, a dyno in the uh, snatch block. All right, we do have a peak force, 14.29. Woo! Science! Yeah, so it shifted and then the swing broke. Huh, I don't remember placing it that way. It didn't shift that much. I think that is kind of the way we were pulling it. What's interesting is how close this gets to this. So it looks like, what, two meters between this and this is like the closest. We can't really use this spot in the redirect. Man, it's really quite complicated to set all this up. How's your slow-mo? That oh, looks pretty cool. You can see it's rated for 10 in the position that we did it. And you can see how the pin is bent and the nose is gone and the sling is broken at 14 kilonewtons. That's great. So our next placement is a nice hand crack. And you can see here that it's placed in there quite nicely. Looks like we're rated for 20 kilonewtons. Oh boy. But even better, we're gonna be pulling around the corner with the same redirect going this way to the same tree. So we're going to find out if uh, this is going to happen. Now, why have a carabiner here is because we want this to break before the uh, dynamometer. So the dynamometer screen will fail around 30, even though the actual aluminum block will be stronger. So um, yeah, I'll put a catcher right here so the dyno doesn't hit anything. But yeah, this is like a fuse in the system. So let's find out. <laughs> Super high force of 15 kilonewtons. Dude, it broke the rock. <laughs> wow, it exploded the rock. So do you think it was just bad rock or do you think the vector forces of this angle? I absolutely multiplied it. Oh, big yeah. time. You think you're picking that angle? Yeah. I mean, that's like a... Hey, math people, tell us how much force 15 kilonewtons put on this angle. It's about that much. It's your evaluation, Bobby. Based on seeing lots of hangers pulled to high tension, I would say this was at least 20, if not 30 kilonewtons that um, got put on this. It's not the right shape. Nope. Uh, how's our tri-cam? So it looks like our tri-cam is one with the rock, but still holding strong. Same with our carabiner. So... Uh, yeah. Hmm. I guess we're going to try it again. So if our, our math is correct, we're pulling 81 feet through the system for every one foot of pull at the tricam. Jeez, that's scary! Here, hobble along. Let's go find out what we got. Science. 
Guess the force. 19. 12.27. So you can see the blue fibers on the rock. You can see where it was touching the rock that it cut the sling. Uh, it's substantially lower than, I mean, we did take this to 15 plus more that way, but at 12.27, it's uh, interesting. Well, I got another one I'm gonna stick in here and we're gonna see if we get a similar result. But having it redirected reduces the force on this. And so I was expecting it to break where the carabiner was or the carabiner would break. So the nose is crunched a little bit and the back is scraped, but otherwise in good condition. Okay, here's our next tri cam and it's rated for 20 kilonewtons the way it is with our carabiner. And I'm going to turn this guy on. All I ask is push the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers here, you guys. Or the like button would at least minimum. Um, let's see what we got. Three point eight kilonewtons, and it came out. Uh, you can see the plastic was on the rock. I try to prevent that from rubbing directly. The nose is scraped. The back is scraped, and you can get you know six ish when you uh, take a whipper. And it just wasn't in the rock that good. So I'm going to try placing it again, and I guess we're going to get that break in a minute. I super doubt that's coming out anytime soon. Problem is, it's rubbing this point a lot. But I guess this is a common placement in the gunks where you actually place it either in a horizontal crack and pull down or it just not in the same direction. But this is ideal with a tri-cam versus a cam pulling around the corner like this. We're almost at one kilonewton. Whoa, <laughs> exciting <noise>. stuff. <laughs> Ah, every wow. time it's terrified. Wow, there's the dust. <laughs> the sling, right where it touches the rock, as you can see right there, it came around, really does a number on this thing. In case of the condition of this is uh, chipped, gnarled, scraped, scratched, used. Uh, but still in pretty good shape. Yeah, pretty good. 